So today we're going to be talking about graphing on the coordinate plane. Now the coordinate plane is basically what you might think of as a graph. So the coordinate plane is made up of two axes. We have the x-axis, which is a horizontal line, and we have the y-axis, which is a vertical line. If you forget which one is x and which one is y, I like to think of it because the letter x is kind of fat and wide, and the letter Y is kind of skinny and tall, so X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Now the coordinate plane, sometimes they will have other lines. Those lines are just to help us find out where the points are on the graph. Now, a coordinate plane in geometry is going to be used almost exclusively to show location. Okay, location, location, location. So a coordinate plane shows location. Because this is a two-dimensional, plane, it's flat, there's only two directions on the graph, there's left and right, and there's up and down. That's only two dimensions, there's only two directions. So because of that, we have a horizontal position, and we have a vertical position. So when we're talking about location, whatever we put on this graph is going to have a horizontal location and a vertical location. To talk about something's location, we use what we call coordinates. So a coordinate tells you the location of a point on the coordinate plane based on its horizontal location and its vertical location. When we talk about a coordinate, we write it with a, a pair of two numbers inside of parentheses. The first number is the x value, that's our horizontal position, and the second number is the y value, which is our vertical position. One point on the graph that's very important to know is the point where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect each other. That point, which is right here, where the two lines intersect, that point is called the origin. Okay? The reason it's called the origin, when we talk about something's origin, we talk about where is something from, where is it originally from. This is called the origin because the coordinate is 0, 0. In other words, all other points on the coordinate plane, we figure out where they are based on the origin. How far away from the origin are they? The original location would be the center, the 0, 0. Every other point is how far away from the origin is it? That's how we determine its location. So from the origin, the x value is how far either to the right or to the left from the origin. Now, how can we tell the difference if it's right or left? That's where we have positives and negatives. If we're going to the right of the origin, we're moving to the right, this is going to be a positive x value. So any positive number tells us how far to the right we are from the origin. If we are going to the left of the origin, we know it's to the left if we use a negative number. That tells us how far from the origin to the left. So if we have a negative number for x in our coordinate, that tells us we're going to the left. If we have a positive number, that tells us we're going to the right. Similarly, we can do the same thing with the y values. From the origin, we have a vertical movement, that's our y. It's either going to be moving up or it's going to be moving down. So we do the same thing. We have a positive number, a positive y, tells us that we're moving up, away from the origin. So if the number is positive, that means we move up. If the number is negative, we have a negative y, that tells us that we moved down from the origin. So on a coordinate plane, we have the x-axis and the y-axis. They meet at the origin. And if you notice, when we have these two axes, they split the graph up into four pieces, four different corners. What we call these are quadrants. Quadrants are the different, four different parts of the graph that are on a coordinate plane. When we are talking about the four quadrants, we always start in the top right quadrant. This top right quadrant, we call it quadrant one, 
and we use a Roman numeral, which is, looks like a capital I. This capital I means one in Roman numerals. The rest of the other three quadrants go in order, one, two, three, four, going counterclockwise. So if you look at a clock, the clock ticks going this way, we're going the opposite direction, which means it's counterclockwise. So starting in the top right, we move to the left and rotate around to label our quadrants. So the top right is quadrant one, the top left would be quadrant two, and we use a cap, it looks like a capital I, but with two lines, that's a Roman numeral for the number two. On the bottom left, we have quadrant three, which is like a capital I, but with three lines. And then we have quadrant four in the bottom right, which looks like a capital I and a V with two lines on the top and the bottom. This means four. This is a Roman numeral that means four. So this is quadrant one going counterclockwise, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Now, based on the origin, we can figure out the signs, which means positive or negative, for the coordinates in each quadrant. In other words, if we're looking at quadrant one, what do you think the signs of the two coordinates will be? Think about what direction from the origin, what direction are you moving horizontally, and what direction are you moving vertically? What signs would they make these? Would it make it positive or negative? Now do the same thing for the other three quadrants. Write what you think the signs would be. Would it be positive, 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 negative, negative, positive, or negative, negative? Do that for each of the four quadrants, and we'll go over the answer during the live session. So here's another way that a coordinate plane can look like. It can have the axes like before, but we also can have these grid lines. The grid lines are helpful to find the exact location of different points. Now a point is just a single location on a coordinate plane. We normally use a dot to show where that point is. Now in geometry, points on a coordinate plane are very commonly used to show the points of a shape. I'm gonna show you an example. So in this example, we have a four-sided polygon, okay? A polygon is just a shape with straight lines, like this. This is a four-sided polygon, and each of the points where the two lines meet have a location on the coordinate plane. Each of these points, they're called a vertex. So a vertex is the point where two lines of a polygon meet. So in this case, we have these two red lines that make up two different sides of the polygon, and they meet at this green point, which is called a vertex. Now, using the coordinate plane, we can show the location of each of the vertices. Vertices is plural for vertex. We can show the location using coordinates. Something that's important for geometry is that when we have points on a coordinate plane, we usually label them with a capital letter. In this example, I'm going to label this A, B, C and D. Those are the four vertices of this polygon. A, B, C, and D. What I'm going to do is write the coordinates for each of these points. The point A, from the origin, how far horizontally do we have to move to get to the point A? So we're only talking horizontally. We're only talking about left and right. So if I'm starting here at the origin, which is the point zero, zero, I have to move one space to the right in order to be in line with A. So if I move one space to the right, then my coordinate, my X value, would be a positive one. That means I move to the right one. My vertical distance from the origin, I'm going up one, two, three, four, five spaces. I went up five spaces, so that means my y value, my vertical distance, is a positive 5. So the coordinate 1, 5 tells me the location of A, which means I have to go one space to the right and five spaces up to end up at A. This is where the grid lines come in handy, because you can see how far away something is by looking at how um, far on the grid lines there. So if I look at point B, to get to point B, I have to go one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to the left. 
Now, if I write six as my x value, how do I know if that means six to the right or six to the left? That's where the signs come in handy. So if I put a negative six, that's telling me I have to go to the left. To get to B from the origin, I have to go up one, two, three spaces. So I went up three, so that means I'm gonna have a positive three. So the coordinates for B is negative six because I went to the left, positive three because I went up. C and D, we can do the same thing. To get to C, we have to go one, two, three to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six down. So I went three to the left, that means I'm gonna be negative, and six down, which means I'm gonna be negative. So left and down, negative and negative. And then D, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the right, we went to the right, so that's positive, and one down, so that's a negative one. So these would be the coordinates of the four vertices of this polygon. Now I want you to look at these four coordinates and tell me which quadrant do each of them land in. So for each of these, tell me which quadrant are they in. Now in this example, we have a triangle with vertices S, T, and U. Before we do anything else, I want you to notice that the points S and the points T are not in any particular quadrant. They are in between two quadrants. So when we have a point that's in between two quadrants, we cannot say that they're in one quadrant or the other. For example, point S is on the line that separates quadrant one from quadrant two. This line is called the Y axis. The line that T is on that separates quadrant two from quadrant three is called the X axis. So, if a point is on the axis, we would, we would not say that it's in any quadrant, we would say it's on the axis. So the point S is not in quadrant one and it's not in quadrant two, it's on the Y axis. Now, when you have a point on the axis, one of the two coordinates is always going to be zero. Now, looking at this point S, did it move from the origin? Did it move any places to the right or any places to the left? The answer is no. So because it didn't move right or left, our x value, which is our horizontal, is going to be zero. And the y value will be how far up or how far down it is. So you'll always have zero, comma, whatever the y value is. The same thing goes with the x-axis. If we look at point T, we do have horizontal movement. It moved to the left, but it didn't move up or down at all. So our coordinate will be whatever the x value is, however far right or left, and then zero, because it didn't move up or down. So what I want you to do now is give me the coordinates for each of these three vertices. Find the coordinates of s, the coordinates of t, and the coordinates of u. And tell me, are they, which quadrant are they in? or are they on the x-axis, or are they on the y-axis?